May 25, 1996. A 19-year-old student, Kristen Smart, was coming back from a student's party. She felt sick due to the alcohol, and several friends proposed to walk her to her dormitory. Kristen Smart never got to her room and disappeared without a trace. It took 25 years to solve the mystery of Kristen's disappearance. It was solved thanks to the help of an eight-year-old boy. Kristen's Description Kristen Smart was born on February 20, 1977, in a town called Augsburg in Germany, to a teacher's family. In her youth, her family moved to Stockton, California. In 1996, Kristen turned 19 years old. It was an important year in her life. She graduated from high school and enrolled at California's Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, Cal Polytech. Kristen was an open, active, and ambitious woman. On holidays, she worked as a lifeguard at camp. The Party On May 24, 1996, a birthday party was held at a fraternity house. Kristen wanted to attend the party, but didn't know anyone there, so she invited her friend to it. The friend declined the invitation, so Kristen made a simple yet fatal decision. Attend the party alone. It was a regular student's party, noisy company, dancing to loud music, and tons of alcohol. Kristen consumed huge amounts of alcohol, and when she noticed her wristwatch showing 2 a.m., she decided to head to her dormitory. She felt sick and could barely stand. Two other students, Cheryl Anderson and Tim Davis, were also leaving the party and, having noticed Kristen, offered to walk her home, despite living far from her dorm. After a while, another student from the party, Paul Flores, joined the company. Paul was also a student and lived near Kristen. He promised the other guys to deliver Kristen home safe and sound. Police report. Two days have passed. All attendees of the party have sobered up, got some sleep, and continued living their ordinary lives. Kristen Smart was nowhere to be found. Her roommate, Jennifer Phipps, thought that Kristen simply got lost and would come back soon. But after two days, she decided to file a missing persons report to campus police. Jennifer's report didn't get much attention as the policeman thought she had gone to her family's house for the weekend. They also didn't find her leaving her documents and money in the room strange, despite it being a seven-hour ride from the dorm to the house. Besides, it is unlikely she could have gone anywhere in her condition in the middle of the night. After Jennifer's report, campus policemen decided to check the information and phoned Kristen's parents. Ms. Smart told them that Kristen did not arrive in the family's house and was alerted by this conversation. The next day, on May 28th, Jennifer once again addressed the campus police. It has been four days since Kristen disappeared. This time, the police properly filed a missing persons report and began questioning witnesses. Cal Poly Police Investigation First, the police questioned Paul Flores. Paul, who walked the student to the dorm, told the police that he had successfully delivered her to it and went home to sleep. Susan Flores, Paul's mother, stated that her husband, Ruben Flores, got a call in the middle of the night, hastily clothed up, and left the house. Paul Flores had a black eye and hit marks on his hands, but he explained it was trauma he got during a basketball game. Police didn't have any substantial clues or evidence that pointed to Paul Flores, and Paul actively denied any involvement in the woman's disappearance. On June 1st, Police searched Kristen's room and gathered her personal belongings. After nine days, they searched Paul Flores' room. At this point, the session has ended and students' rooms were professionally cleaned, so police didn't find any clues. On June 26th, more than a month since the woman's disappearance, Cal Poly's police transferred Kristen's case to the San Luis Obispo Police Department. Police Investigation the police organized a search of California Polytech University's campus using 400 volunteers and California's cadaver dogs able to catch the scent of human remains. All three dogs pointed at a mattress in a part of the room that belonged to Paul Flores. Paul Flores' family owned several houses. In June of 1996, police got an order to search the house of Paul's father, Ruben Flores. 
During the search, police found several newspapers discussing Kristen Smart's disappearance, but those weren't substantial clues. The police did not search Susan Flores' house. Missing persons posters were pinned on the streets. Billboards promised a reward for any information regarding Kristen. All of these actions didn't lead to any clues. In November, Smart's family got news that Paul Flores was trying to apply to the United States Navy. Kristen's parents formed a wrongful death civil lawsuit to prevent Paul from leaving the country. And in December, the United States Navy denied Paul's application. In the year 2000, police got new information from Susan Flores' neighbors. They swore under oath that during the summer of 1996, a while after Kristen's disappearance, they saw Paul Flores and his father cement their house's backyard. With this information, the police got an order to search Susan's house. Since that time, the backyard changed a lot. There were flower beds now. Investigators used a new ground-penetrating radar and cadaver dogs. They spent nine hours in Flores' house, but ultimately decided not to dig up the concrete, thinking that their radar scan was enough. The police didn't find any new clues. On May 25th, 2002, six years after Kristen Smart's disappearance, she was officially presumed dead. Police guessed that Paul Flores had something to do with the disappearance, but during these six years, the investigation couldn't find enough clues to file charges. The search continued. In 2004, Smart's family collected donations to alert the public of their daughter's case and rent billboards across Highway 101. Twelve years later, in 2016, the FBI used cadaver dogs again. The dogs led investigators to a hillside near Kristen's student campus, but digging did not produce any results. Podcaster Chris Lambert leads his own investigation. Podcaster Chris Lambert has spent most of his life in Central California and, in his youth, repeatedly saw a billboard with Kristen Smart. He saw it the first time when he was eight years old, and he remembered this story well when he grew up. In 2019, Chris started a podcast series titled Your Own Backyard, dedicated to various crimes. Kristen Smart's case kept bugging him, so Chris decided to lead his own investigation. The man personally questioned witnesses of those events. By asking students that studied in the university, he learned that Paul Flores had a sketchy reputation. Paul repeatedly harassed women, but it never got to official lawsuits. Then, Chris Lambert decided to investigate the actions of the police. He learned that investigators had made lots of mistakes. Knowing that Paul Flores frequently visited his father's house, policemen should have investigated that area first. Ruben Flores' house was searched only in July of 1996, two months after Kristen's disappearance. In that time, all the evidence could have been destroyed. Flores' family also owned two cars police didn't pay attention to. Chris Lambert learned that after the police visit to the Flores family in 1996, they sold one of the cars and the other one was reported stolen. But the main and crucial mistake was made with Paul Flores' mother's house. Lambert learned that four months after Kristen Smart's disappearance, Paul's mother's house was rented to a woman named Mary Lassiter. Several weeks after that, Mary Lassiter discovered an earring in a concrete crack. It was a silver earring with a turquoise stone in it. It also had a dark red stain on it that looked like blood. Mary saw a similar earring on a billboard with Kristen's picture. She immediately brought the evidence to the police and was eager to help the investigation, but was quickly turned down. Chris learned of many other shocking details from Mary Lassiter. In 1996, every day since moving to Flores' house, Mary heard sounds from the backyard. Each day, at the same exact time, at 4.20 a.m. and 4.20 p.m., she heard a sound that was very similar to a wristwatch alarm. Eventually, the sound stopped. The wristwatch battery ran out. Chris Lambert's Podcast Resonance Lambert's podcasts aired in 2019. Millions of listeners went crazy because of what they heard, stunned by police's inaction and incompetence, 
and by the shocking details that Chris Lambert had collected. Public pressure forced the police department to come back to Kristen Smart's case. In January of 2020, the police publicly confirmed that they had found two cars that belonged to the Flores family in 1996, performed a search using cadaver dogs, and found new clues. Three months after, an order was given to search Paul Flores' house in San Pedro, California. A personal phone and computer were confiscated. Among other items found during the search, policemen found rape drugs. Furthermore, they found more proof of Paul drugging women in his phone and computer. On March 15, 2021, police were, once again, given an order to search Ruben Flores' house using a modern ground-penetrating radar and cadaver dogs. A thorough search of the house's territory and backyard did not find Kristen's body or her remains. The experts could, however, determine that the ground had some traces of decomposed human body. This new evidence was enough to file charges against Paul Flores and Ruben Flores, accusing them of Kristen Smart's murder in 1996. Arrest Paul Flores was taken into custody at his home in Los Angeles on April 13, 2021. He was accused of first-degree murder and denied bail. Paul's father, 80-year-old Ruben Flores, was arrested the same day and accused of accessory to murder with a $250,000 bail. On September 22, a San Luis Obispo Supreme Court judge, Dan Dow, ruled that there was sufficient evidence of guilt for the case to proceed to trial. Paul Flores and Ruben Flores will answer in court to Kristen Smart's murder. The investigation stated that Paul started assaulting the woman after Tim Davis and Cheryl Anderson left, but was rejected. Kristen was a tall and strong woman. That could explain the marks on Flores' body. After attempted assault and rape, Paul murdered Kristen, got scared, and called his father. Having learned what his son had done, Ruben decided to help him hide the body. Together, they brought the woman to the mother's house and buried her in the backyard, cementing it later. During this period, the house was rented to Mary Lassiter, and she heard an alarm on Kristen's wristwatch under the concrete. After some time, probably scared of the police investigation, the father and his son dug up the grave and moved the body somewhere else, turning the backyard into a garden. This version explains why traces of decomposed human body were found under flower beds, but not Kristen's remains. The Flores still deny all accusations, but with new evidence and public attention, it's going to be hard to escape a 25-year late justice. Kristen's parents released a statement thanking Chris Lambert and all those not indifferent to Smart's family tragedy. The statement read, For over 24 years, we have waited for this bittersweet day. It is impossible to put into words what this day means for our family. We pray it is the first step to bringing our daughter home. While Kristen's loving spirit will always live in our hearts, our life without her hugs, laughs, and smiles is a heartache that never abates. The knowledge that a father and son, despite our desperate pleas for help, could have withheld this horrible secret for nearly 25 years, denying us the chance to lay our daughter to rest, is an unrelenting and unforgiving pain. We now put our faith in the justice system and move forward, comforted in the knowledge that Kristen has been held in the hearts of so many and that she has not been forgotten. Lots of questions still remain unanswered, but there is hope that one day, Kristen Smart's remains will be found. Friends, share your opinion about this investigation in the comments. What could have happened during that fatal night? Could Paul Flores have planned it all from the very beginning, drugging Kristen at the party? Was Paul Flores' mother aware of his actions? We would also be extremely grateful for your feedback, likes, and subscriptions. Until the next time.